Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Catherine Haleko, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Say hi, Terry. Hello. So usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Terry and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics, but mostly TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do that because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week on round two, we'll be continuing our discussion of the West Wing and Sports Nights rewatches that we're doing, um, plus checking in on the new Christopher Guest mockumentary, which is called Mascots. Okay. But first, Dancing with the Stars. Ah, oh, yes. Latin night. Mm-hmm. Showers on the stage night. Yeah. Satin the, sheets. I didn't, I didn't see much tango happening in I did that not. one. Which was Jana and Gleb. Yeah, you know, not so much with the dancing. But they got all tens, so it must have been good. I know. That was... (laughs) I thought Calvin and Lindsay's was much better. I really liked theirs, and I really liked James and Sharna's. I thought James was... I did. He was so graceful. He was just... He really was. he, He was really good. Like, he had all the little details, you know, not just getting the steps right, Mm -hmm. but really really musical and graceful and and similarly with calvin and then they had those amazing lifts and i even liked the setting like the staging of it Mm -hmm. with the um sunset background thing that they did like i liked that so much yeah Um, and i I liked tara's also tara didn't get Mm -hmm. very great scores but i thought hers was just adorable i thought they did a great job i mean there was you give them a dance that requires a certain amount of hold and stuff like that and that's not something that they can do but i thought that they did a very right. enjoyable dance so i'm still i'm still hot on my four those <laughs> four the three of them plus Lori. Ta- uh, uh, sasha is doing such a good job at, he really he's just is so creative with yes. the way he's coming up with choreography for the two of them. Yes, so, I think he's doing a great job. Him. And I also thought Sharna's choreography was really good with mm-hmm. James. And I mean, not that I, I'm talking like I know anything about choreography, but I thought that was a, a good <laughs> dance for him. It made him look really good. Um, mm-hmm. As <laughs> and then, then we come to uh, Cheryl and Ryan. I felt like Cheryl oh went goodness. to the big box of tricks backstage and just pulled everything out. <laughs> fluorescent gel body paint yes right. fluorescent knee pads oh yeah the knee pads take were... off his pants we're gonna take off his shirt we're gonna do this we're gonna do that i you know i have nothing against ryan at all he seems like a sweet and simple soul but he ain't a dancer <laughs> and he got he had like he'd like 20 good seconds of dancing which is maybe more than he's had before this before it all fell apart yeah but after just... that it's like it was a lot of faffing about, as Len would say. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's very stiff. He really you know, is. For someone who can glide effortlessly through yes. water, <laughs> he cannot yeah. do that on I, land. <laughs> I think it's an entirely different set of muscles and body configuration that makes one a good swimmer than what makes one a good dancer, apparently. Um, but, uh, and yeah, with the, the Jenna and Gleb thing, it's like, if you're going to be a dancing show, might be good to reward dancing, you know, mm-hmm. rather than stagecraft. Um, right. I, it's not my not my thing, I guess. Yeah, and uh, I was waiting for Carrie Ann to be like, well, that was nice, but it wasn't a tango. But... Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, very few of the things tonight were really the thing they were supposed to be. Yeah, and I, guess I so. think part of the problem, just from reading uh, people's complaints about them, <laughs> Mm-hmm. I think very little of the music was actually the proper music for whatever dance they were doing. Uh, okay. So that did not help. Um, yeah. And so they were sort of working against that, and then they were working with the limitations of their partner. And right. so it was just, you know, if I'm entertained, I really don't care. Right. But if it's just, I, I have historically not liked the things that are just really sexy for the sake of being sexy. There was a season... Right. I think it was, maybe it was the all-star season they had a while back. I think it was Val and Kelly Monaco. And all their dances were basically, oh my gosh, just go get a room. Right. It's like, I don't want to see that on my mm-hmm. TV during prime time. So right. this was pretty close. I'm an old person and easily kerfuffled, I guess. Well, and what I liked about, we didn't mention Lori yet, but yes. um, 
hers was nice and fast and that's kind of what was. I think of as yeah. um, that style, you know, like, yeah. yeah, you get that it's supposed to be sexy, but I want to see like really fast yes. feet. Yes. <laughs> and she's from the footwork point of view, she's just working at a completely different level from everybody else. And so mm-hmm. it's sort of appropriate then that she be scored on a harder curve, yeah. I guess, but as long as it does not endanger her in the end, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I thought she was fantastic. You know, what, what could you say? And she's the, the thing of her with the other gymnasts I thought was cute. That was cute. Yes. That was one of the, the extra bits that I did actually watch. Yes. <laughs> you oh, you were fast I, forwarding through you stuff. You know how I have to fast forward. Yeah. I, I started watching it live and then I went and had dinner and then I was playing catch up the rest of the time. And just as Lori and Val were starting to dance, I accidentally hit the off button. And oh. then because I was, you know, had paused live TV, you couldn't go back to where you were. So I had to go to where yeah. I'd recorded it and fast forward all the way. But it was worth it. It was worth it. Yeah. Maureen needs to go home next. Very bad. I was very happy to see Amber go so long. I have a feeling Amber was happy to see Amber go. Yes. I could. What was, what was going on there? Because everything about Amber has been negative and unhappy to be there. Her package was negative and unhappy to be there. And the judge's comments were, you present such positivity and happiness to be there. And I'm like, (laughs) What are you watching (laughs) or perhaps imbibing during commercials? What the (laughs) heck? And uh, they did the same thing with Maureen. Oh, you're so, you're so positive and enthusiastic. And I'm like, excuse me, are we watching the same show? Uh, So I, it was time for her to go. I can't believe that Max is too upset. He seemed to have been like, both he and Cheryl seemed to be like, I came back for this. Really? Right. Really? <laughs> um, <laughs> How much more do I have to do now? <laughs> Can I just cash my paycheck and go now? Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it was her time for sure. But Maureen, even more so, is, is she's got to go next week. I'm just tired of hearing her. At the beginning, it was sort of a tremulousness. Oh, she's nervous. And isn't that, you know, come on, come on, you can do it. But mm-hmm. now, week after week after week, I'm not a professional dancer. I right. don't know what I'm doing. Um, just, just you know, you, you were aware of the show that you were going on, right? Exactly. You signed a contract. Yeah. Um, buck up, Nobody lady. else is a professional <laughs> dancer, except for possibly Tara. Uh, you know, no one else has. Uh, yeah. And I mean, Lori yeah. is, is, has some experience, but everybody else, I mean, James is yeah. not ever somebody who's ever danced before. Calvin no. is not somebody who's ever particularly danced before. Exactly. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. just cut it out. <laughs> I'm so tired of listening to her. And I think Artem must just be yeah. hitting his head on the wall <laughs> in between takes. Um, mm-hmm. So, yes, I, I just really, really hope. She, I don't know who is voting for her. Is there a deep well of Brady Bunch support that is causing her, her to stay afloat? Which I, I find that hard to believe. I do. I, don't know. I do. Yeah. Let's so. let's keep our fingers crossed for next week. Right. Exactly. And, uh, and hope also that... Um, you know, the four that we like. <laughs> right. Keep on going. Keep and keep going. on doing well. I mm-hmm. um, I am sad, though. To see, it looks like from frequent pans out into the audience that James has a blonde girlfriend. Have we seen uh, her before? Has she been in the audience before? I don't know. Because I've been shipping him and Sharna, you know. <laughs> they have a really nice rapport. I've been thinking, right. you know, I think she's single, maybe but no, apparently there's a blonde girlfriend. Maybe maybe blonde girlfriend watched the first few episodes and said, you know what? I'm going to go sit in the audience. Right. I think I need to make Have them put a spotlight snow. on me so my blonde hair particularly glows every time the camera pans past, buddy. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're dancing sexy with red hair right. girl. Right. So well, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was pretty enjoyable. I... I I enjoyed the dancing that was good, and I laughed pretty hard at the dancing that was that was bad. <laughs> yeah. Ryan's Ryan's number was enjoyable, just not perhaps in the way it they was intended. Goofy, <laughs> yeah. So now, did they say what is next week? Any sort of thing? I don't think they said. I don't remember hearing anything. All so right. maybe it's just it's about time for them to start getting into team stuff and silliness like that. Right. Although there's still, it seems like there's still a lot of people, doesn't there? Well, every week when they trot them out, I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah we're these still... <laughs> people are still here. So maybe there's another week before they they have enough time to do right. 
the silly stuff. Ah, I bet they have enough. Next week is next week would be Halloween week, right? Oh yeah. Oh, they're going to do some would. stupid or maybe, Halloween related team dances. Or will they do that on Halloween itself? Because Halloween oh, that's is right. on Monday. Yes. Okay, that's when they'll do it. That's when they'll do yeah. it. Yeah. So look forward to that. So now yes. tell me about this uh, mascots that you watched. Yeah. So this just came out on Netflix on last. Thursday, I think it was. I just saw a commercial for it on the ABC app while I was watching Sports Nights for this episode. I think that might be the first time I've heard about it. Is it a movie or a series? It's a movie. It's um, like, you know, an hour and 40 minute movie or something. It's it's in the grand tradition of Christopher Guest mockumentaries, a la Best in Show and A Mighty Wind and... Waiting for Guffman, all of those. Mm-hmm. Um, so in this time, it's about people who are mascots, sort of semi-professional, I would say. <laughs> Accent um, on the semi. Yeah, for like random small colleges or for minor league baseball teams, uh-huh. things like that. Um, and they're gathering for like a competition mm-hmm. where, where an award called the Fluffy will be... <laughs> presented <laughs> the bronze silver and gold fluffies I see. will be bestowed and it has you know all of your favorite characters you know actors yes that the whole are in is his here. in his his group um you know you get jane lynch and ed begley and bob balaban and uh, the whole it, parker posey um no not Catherine <gasps> O'Hara, not no. in this one um, John Michael Higgins, mm-hmm. Michael Hitchcock, like many, many yeah. of them. Um, Chris O'Dowd is in it, and mm-hmm. he he was in um, a, a series I think that Christopher Guest did, but not. Um, I don't believe he's been in the the other movies. Mm-hmm. But you know who else is in it Ooh. that hasn't been? I don't think in previous ones. Susan Yeagley, okay. who is. is Jessica Wicks from Parks and Rec. Oh, Sweetums. okay. Sweetums Foundation, Jessica. Yes. All right. Okay, so she actually has a pretty big part huh. in in mascots. So I can um, see her fitting it, right into that world yeah. pretty neatly. Yeah, she was great. She plays Parker Posey's sister, mm-hmm. um, and they're all, you know it's very funny, yeah. and they're just. It, my husband and I watched together and we've watched, we've seen all the other ones. We didn't put it as high as some of the other ones. Like mm-hmm. we, we put it, I think in about fourth place, but it was still, <laughs> it was still a very enjoyable yeah. hour and a half with some very, very funny moments. In now, it. was this a movie made for Netflix or is it something that was in the theaters? I think it was made for Netflix. Yeah. It was never, this is, it's, it just came out. So. Made for Netflix is going to be like the perfect home for a lot of stuff like that. I mean, mm-hmm. I can see him just making one every so often for Netflix. It's, right. you know, for a theatrical release, I think it would have to have more potential for a larger audience. But for mm-hmm. Netflix, that's right. His just... audience is there right. <laughs> waiting Absolutely. for him to give them something. So that's yeah. that's a nice solution, I think. Mm-hmm. I I knew that it was coming. I didn't realize it was going to be available when we turned to Netflix and said, hey, let's watch something. Uh-huh. Um, and there it was. So we grabbed it. Cool. We were glad. That's nice. So. I, I would like to be at a point where I could just turn the TV on and say, hey, I'd like to watch something. What's what's around? I, mm-hmm. I never get to that point. I have the stuff that I watch for this podcast that I have to watch. And uh, I have things that I watch with my husband uh, if I happen to have a free evening which is like NCIS, all flavors of NCIS and Hawaii Five-0 and stuff like that. And I, it's been a long time since I've just gone on Netflix to watch a random thing. And I miss that. Yeah. I, it's, I do not it's, see that day coming soon, sadly. It's, it's pretty rare. <laughs> <laughs> we found ourselves with a few kid-free hours. And yeah. that is what we did. We spent it with these wackos on <laughs> <laughs> well, I see. I think part of the thing is I have to get one of those fancy TVs that you can watch Netflix on, 
or some other because I don't are the TV we have you can't plug any of the devices that play Netflix into it. Oh. So one of these days, and then I can watch it. We can watch watch it together instead right. of watching it on my computer. You know, putting instead the computer on the table and watching something the is the not quite laptop. the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well that sounds cool thank you for uh for talking about that yeah i, I will keep an it. eye out for it in my theoretical free time that's right <laughs> which may time. one day come hopefully it right. will still be there so speaking of things that i have watched what are we doing next west wing or sports night let's do sports okay. night we we kicked off season two yeah. of sports night the, the um, good the and the bad of season two of sports night Right. So the first four episodes of that season were the ones we've watched. It's Mm -hmm. Special Powers, When Something Wicked This Way Comes, Cliff Gardner, and the fourth one is called Louise Revisited. In this one, in this particular set of episodes, we meet Sam Donovan, who's played by William H. Macy. Um, He is a ratings consultant that Isaac has brought in. Um, So, of course, everyone is afraid of him and thinks he's horrible. Um, (laughs) Until... (laughs) Yes. He really goes to bat for them all in um, Cliff, the episode that's called Cliff Garden. Yes, I really like that. That's the one I watched just before we've had this conversation because I didn't quite make it to the fourth one. But uh, I really like the revelation that he's not just somebody Isaac's brought in. He's somebody that Isaac knows and trusts and has a history with. Mm-hmm. And uh, and also that then he, he just, that speech and leading them out of there was wonderful. Uh, right. And, you know, the way he, he says what he can do is he can make the glass tubes as a, just a really nicely written speech. Mm -hmm. Uh, Although, could those network executives have been any more mustache twirling than they were? (laughs) Could they have just put black hats on their heads? Because possibly (laughs) we might not have known that we're not supposed to like them. (laughs) Holy cow, were they obnoxious. I mean, JJ has been with us all along, but they brought in these two Two other ones who are just as awful as I'm sure Aaron Sorkin thinks that network people offering <laughs> right. notes are he was getting some some uh through <laughs> some stuff <laughs> yeah he was working through some stuff there i think um but wow they were they they loaded that deck pretty good yes well and you do kind of have to you do kind of have to wonder like you know ostensibly these network people are paying his salary yes. sam's uh-huh. and isaac's and yes. dana's like they could <laughs> just cut it all off. They really at any could. Minute. They really could, and and hold that thought. But um, <laughs> yes, so that I, I have to put Sam Donovan in the column of season two things uh, in these first four episodes. Good things that we met in these first four episodes. Okay. Sadly, in the first four episodes, we also meet Dana's dating plan. Oh yeah. <sighs> Heavy sigh. Annoying. Yes. Yes. Dana's dating plan, which is that she and Casey should not actually date until he he dates other people for six months. Monumentally bad plot idea, Aaron Sorkin. And it's what most people, I think, who enjoyed Sports Night, when you mentioned season two, I think we all just go, oh, the dating Um, plan. Right. Not that I honestly feel that that Dana and Casey have that kind of got to get them together chemistry that makes me despair of them not being together every moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but just... But it's just the artificiality of it. It really is. It's yeah. such a conceit and it's such a, you know, one of those things where we can't get the couple together because then it's boring, which I think has been fairly well disproved and disputed. But then just don't get them together. Have, mm-hmm. have Dana say, I don't want to date anybody right now. Or... But it's this stupid thing that no actual human woman would ever do. I would like to say it's over like in an episode or two, but sadly it is not. not. I mean, even in that that fourth episode, she really strings him along, you know? Yeah. Because the way she goes out with this high school friend and it's the whole thing of then she comes back and tells Natalie that she took off her underwear yeah. during the date. And and also blah, blah. a thing that no human woman would ever do. There's right. another show that had that plot of, of the underwear coming. Oh, it's it's coming up in West Wing. So that must be <laughs> something Aaron Sorkin read about somewhere. 
and wanted to use. Or he's just into. <laughs> I guess so. He just has this idea that if he goes out with women, they might take their underwear off while they're having dinner. Underneath the table. <laughs> okay. I mean, I've had uncomfortable underwear on before, but never had the urge to just spontaneously remove. I don't think I could do that without people yeah. like noticing. Well, it um, is funny when, when the first thing Natalie says, was it bothering you? <laughs> like, <laughs> why would you do that? Exactly, Natalie. Yes, That's what we were all thinking. Yes. yes. The uh, the first episode where it's like showing how many days have passed and Casey's just trying to get up the nerve to, to yeah. ask her out is the one where I realized, you know what? I don't actually care that much one way or the other. Um, mm, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's if it's... I mean, I think that they have good friendship chemistry. Mm-hmm. I don't really see a whole lot of romantic chemistry coming out of there. So, as opposed to Natalie and Jeremy, who I think are adorable, even when they're having yet another stupid fight that is playing out exactly the same as all the other dumb fights. Although right. I really did like the way that one resolved. I liked Jeremy's speech about that he was didn't want her to do it because then he would have to move to Texas and give up his dream job and all this stuff. I don't right. think she had looked at it from that angle. And that was very sweet. Yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, and then the, the fourth episode that you didn't mm-hmm. watch, that's the one with the underwear and yeah. it's entitled Louise revisited. And uh-huh. there's this thin little plot line where it turns out that Natalie has been writing letters to Louise Mm -hmm. and Jeremy gets all nervous about it, but it's really, it's so minor. And I don't know why that's the name of the episode (laughs) because I thought it would be like another, this is a whole epistolary episode. Yes. Yes. I liked that first one. Right. For being that Um, way. So that's what I was expecting. And that's not what I got. There's an epistolary episode coming up on West Wing this season. Hmm. Way towards the end. Okay. I believe I believe the Stackhouse filibuster is CJ writing a letter to her father. Okay. Again, we see these things. It's like in this episode. I've seen that before. Oh, yeah. Right. Which show was it? <laughs> well, should we move He's writing over? two shows at one, literally. Should we move uh, over yes, to West Wing? Yes, let's move over to West Wing. So, how did you like Ainsley Hayes? I thought she was a fun new character. Yes. Um, I, you know, she's just like her, she's quirky yes. in, in this sort of way we haven't quite seen yet. Yeah. I mean, there, it's kind we of a always different have, energy. Yeah. I mean, there's always like the really smart, fast talker, which mm-hmm. is what she is. <laughs> um, but she's, she's a little different. Um, so I just, I liked the, scenes with her and Leo especially yes, those uh, were wonderful and so and uh, after after Leo was so upset that the president had mentioned doing this and just really didn't want to do it and yet right. once he was in a room with her he was sort of just leaning back in his chair <laughs> enjoying yeah. watching her do whatever it is she does so um yeah and I really enjoyed the interview with her on the West Wing Weekly podcast um, mm-hmm. she was very funny and, uh, lots of good stories and, uh, what it must be like coming into a show like that just for, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. however many episodes they decide to have you back. Um, right. <laughs> and, uh, she kept talking about how nervous she was and yes. who could blame her? <laughs> but she, I thought the character came off very well and all the decisions that got made, whether she felt they were the right decision or not, were the right decision. And, uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ending is a little abrupt, her switch over, but um, I don't mind. Next episode is another very... You mean when, when she goes and, and she's with her friends and they're yeah. kind of making fun and yes. she tells them how great everybody is yes. in the White House. I mean, she's told CJ she's not taking the job and then she has this little discussion with Sam and Josh and then she sees the stuff going on in the White House and right. all of a sudden she's completely on... You right, know, completely up for I'm it, in. which I'm in. I didn't quite see that transition, but I don't care because she's, mm-hmm. uh, I enjoy having her on the show. She's not on the show a whole lot, uh, but uh, the next episode is very Ainsley heavy and very proud of our, proud of our team uh, okay. and stuff. So, I like those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Gilbert and Sullivan, in case you're oh. into that. Okay. As one might guess by the title of it, which is, and it's surely to their credit. 
Mm-hmm. So. so that is what we're going to watch next time. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else about this one? We get we get this whole plot line about um, funding for um, pharmaceutical firms being held with their feet to the fire, which <laughs> is still timely. Yes, it is. Today. But, uh, I thought, as they were saying on the West Wing Weekly podcast, I liked the fact that this was an episode where we sort of got all sides. I mean, we got all sides filtered through what Aaron Sorgan feels comfortable putting into people's mm-hmm. mouths. But mm-hmm. there, there was some effort to, I think, point out some difficulties, even though, um, you know, the, the... They still didn't come off the, no, looking they, that great. <laughs> they didn't. Plus, which the, the, the guy, as they were saying on the podcast, the actor playing the president was just so compelling. And, yes. uh, you know, you talk about, we've, we've talked about uh, Marley Matlin being on as Joey Lucas and the challenge of, of the guy who played Kenny, her interpreter. But in these episodes where somebody is coming and talking a foreign language and somebody's interpreting them. Mm-hmm. I thought that was done really nicely too. Whoever whoever uh, the actor who played the interpreter, yes. uh, the spins he was putting on those lines and the different, you know, the way he was listening and talking and stuff. I thought that was really really nicely done. Uh it never made you go, "Oh, can't they just take English the whole time?" It it was like part <sighs> of it. It was like part of the drama of it was the translation. Yeah. Well, and as they pointed out on the podcast, Mm -hmm. you know, the way that the president would switch back and forth because he could speak English, Uh but he would choose when to do it and when not to. And it was really... That was very nicely done. Yeah. All through the episode, I was thinking, oh my gosh, is this the one where at the end there's a coup in his country and he goes back and gets shot? Is this the one? Oh, it's not that one, is it? And yes, it was that one. Yes, it was that one. (laughs) It was... I was pretty sure it was, but when that time came, when they got the note and pulled him, and you know, or yeah, uh, shoot, right, <laughs> right, we just got to know he's you. Such a good character, um, but yeah, I thought it was a good episode. Very nicely done, uh, everything about it, pretty much, and, uh, and poor CJ fearing that she had broken a law, done something that could have yes. Sent her to jail. And Ainsley was very compassionate in letting her down, <laughs> but she does have a point. You know, there are lawyers in the building. You right. really need to go talk to she somebody rather than like, not sleeping. <laughs> yeah, just hoping that nothing's going to happen. Yes, is probably not the best strategy. Which was yes. a good. Point. She was very yes. sweet about it, though, or she could have been. You know, what's the matter right. with you? Right. But, uh, and exactly. uh, I totally did not catch, which they mentioned on the West Wing Weekly podcast, I totally did not catch that that was Sam Jager, who was on Parenthood, who was playing the reporter. I feel like I have to go back now and watch that part. Did you yeah, watch Parenthood I, at all? I watched it for a while. But I watched not... it for a while, too. And I liked his character very much. And then when he it looked like the they were going to... Like the to... Mr. Mom guy? Yes. Okay. And then a, a time came when they were making him more of a jerk. And it's like, you know what? I don't want to watch that. <laughs> so right. that's kind of the point. I'm out. <laughs> at which I turned away, yes. Um, so anyway, good episode, and I'm really looking forward to, to watching the next one because I have fond memories of it. Good. Um, so. And I would recommend, if you are a fan of the West Wing and the West Wing Weekly Podcast, mm-hmm. check out their Facebook page because – they Rishi and Josh Molina went to Alice and Janney's oh, yeah. Walk of Fame mm-hmm. star unveiling yes. or whatever they call it. <laughs> um, and so there's some nice, there's a couple of good pictures um, from that on their Facebook page. So check that out. And I have to say, I have broken down. I would not buy a lapel pin because I have no place to put a lapel pin. I did buy a t-shirt. The t-shirt looks yes. good. I don't know about buying merch from other people's podcasts. <laughs> I feel conflicted about it. But you could but not But it resist. was the, the finger spelling the finger on the spell. back that roped me in. Yes. So at some point in like November, I think they get delivered. Ah, but, okay. Oh, well. Well, you'll have to model it for us. I will. I will take a picture happens. of myself. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so which sports nights are we watching next week? Okay, so next time, Kafelnikov, if I'm saying that right, uh, Shane, Mm -hmm. Kyle Whitaker's got two sacks, Mm -hmm. and the reunion. Okay, and then, and it's surely to their credit of West Wing. Right, and dancing. Whatever it is that Dancing with the Stars chooses to do, we shall be there watching and making fun. 
Exactly. And that's going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes, including our daily speed rounds and weekly group chats. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Hi, Terry. Bye, Catherine. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.